How's it going, everybody? It's Alexandra Hare back again with Alex Parlett, our couples expert extraordinaire in the office. Um, we, after we got off um, last time, I don't know if you would have seen, he came on to talk about the five love languages and how couples essentially can use that information about each other to really actually give love in a way that's receivable by the other partner. And he's back because um, we started talking after we got up off of that video call about the five apology languages and how that could actually be really good content to cover with couples considering um you know for all you partners out there i'm sure at some point in time maybe at least once in the whole uh trajectory of your couple career you guys have had to apologize to each other so um alex parlett is a therapist optimum joy welcome back alex to our nice little zoom uh studio as you will i don't know whatever but um what is kind of the just to kind of bring us up to speed what are the five apology languages kind of give us an overview about that yeah so it similar to that love language right where um we the way that we give love is the way that we want to receive love the way that we give an apology is usually the way that we want to receive an apology um but your partner um probably has a different apology language and actually um i have yet to have a couple have the same apology language oh interesting um, okay yeah i've had couples have the same love languages but i've never actually had a couple have the same apology language which i think is really interesting hmm. but um so there there are five um the first one is just expressing regret right just saying that i'm sorry um the second is accepting responsibility. The third would be making restitutions. The fourth is um, genuinely, genuinely repenting. And then that fifth one would be uh, like requesting forgiveness and ask, asking for forgiveness. Yeah. So essentially is what you're saying, um, cause I'm like super unfamiliar with the five. I was more familiar with the five love languages, but also I didn't know my own, but I'm less familiar with the five apology languages actually. And is kind of the thought or the theory behind it is that out of those five things you just listed is really an individual kind of listening for one as like their indicator of like a true apology. Is that how it works or am I off on that? Yeah. Um, and like, and actually having it register as, oh, this person is actually, you know, genuinely sorry for. Uh, yeah. Right? Um, and so like, for instance, for some people just saying, I'm sorry, that's enough. Yeah. You're good to go. Um, but for others, uh, including myself in this, I don't care if you say I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it actually doesn't mean anything to me that just, just that expressing regret um for me i really need to hear you accept responsibility and to take responsibility and recognize uh, like what you did mm -hmm. uh, or at least what happened and how you played a role in what happened yeah right um and that and that's what i need um and so just as that example there um and so, yeah, when couples are communicating and a conflict comes up and an apology needs to be made, um, you might be failing at that and um, trying to apologize, but your partner might not be receiving it at all. Hmm, yeah. And, you know, um, Alex, you said that uh, it oftentimes you've never had a couple that's lined up on apology languages. Do you think that like is that because gender differences? Is it because of like maybe attachment style differences? Is it just like individual, like family of origin culture? What yeah. really plays into someone's developed, what like them having an uh, apology language? Yeah, I think it, it, have, it it's heavily dependent on family of origin mm. uh, and what they saw as a child, what they inherited um, and, a lot of the times what they like didn't get right um, in an apology growing up. And so um, for, for someone who is apology language is making restitution, right? Um, it's important there for them. They wanna hear how, like, how can I make it right to you, right? And so maybe, right, when they were growing up, that's something they never got, 
in yeah. an apology, right? It was just a, maybe it was just, an, I'm sorry, but never a, how can I make this right? Or how can I change in the future so that this doesn't happen again? Yeah. Um, which is that kind of making restitution piece of the apology yeah. language. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I'm actually even thinking um, about some of my, like, so in my growing up years, you know, when my parents would actually have a conflict, something that they did really well is they would sit all four of us girls down and just be like, hey, we know you guys witnessed us having a conflict. We just want you to know, like, we're dealing with that and we're really sorry, you know? So they would say that. So for me, um, but, you know, would they necessarily uh, follow through on some of those things? is open for debate debate from my child perspective. But it's interesting because, you know, I have like a dear friend that um, we were kind of working through some things recently. And she, in, in our kind of conflict conversations was like, Alex, you never said you were sorry for, you know, the missteps that I took in this friendship. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, I guess I have been talking around sorry and been like, well, how can we make it different? Or, you know, all this different stuff where I was emphasizing the mm -hmm. action on it, but I didn't actually say, you know what, friend, I'm like really sorry that what I did hurt you yeah. and I'll try not to do that again, you know? So I think um, that was really common to me. I got that. So maybe mm -hmm. I never actually illustrated it in my relationship. So it was really important for her to say that to me. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, I always, Usually when I'm, I'm talking with couples about this, I always make that joke of like, hey, if you don't know what their apology language is, hit all five, right? Where it, it's a lengthy apology, but it's something like, I'm sorry. Um, I realize that this is what I did and that was wrong. Um, this is what I'm gonna do to make sure that um, it doesn't happen again. This is how I'm going to change and how I'm gonna make it right. Um, and will you forgive me, right? A super long apology, but you're kind of hitting on every note there. And you know, at some level, something's gonna hopefully hit them as an actual apology. Yeah, and um, I mean, would it be fair to say, Alex, that, um, I don't know if this is an extreme or fair statement, but essentially, if someone doesn't hit all five of those things, that it's not a full apology, is that like technically a, can you, can we go so far as to say that? Not necessarily, right? So like, again, I'll use myself as an example there. I don't need all of that, mm -hmm. right? If right. you, if you just tell me, hey, I realized that I did this and that was wrong. Right. That's the apology for me, right? I don't need an I'm sorry. I don't need you to tell me what you're going to do to fix it in the future. Um, and I don't need you to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Those things are nice, yeah. right? But I don't need that for an apology. I really just need to hear you say, I realize that this is what I did wrong. Right? Yeah, that's so funny. You know what? Um, I'm realizing what has prompted some of my question is sometimes I'm like, ooh, how can I communicate the best way possible so bomb mm -hmm. the other person's court? And I'm realizing that's probably not exactly <laughs> a good attitude to go into it with. It's kind of like, ooh, how can I apologize perfectly so that they don't have anything to criticize me for is probably not some of the attitude that any partner wants to take into their conflict. So I'm realizing that that might be motivating. It's like, how can I do this perfectly? You know? So yeah, yeah. I guess it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. Right. Like I said, it's, it, those other things are nice, right. Yeah. Um, nice to hear, but um, really, you know, your, your partner probably has one main apology language, maybe two that are close. Right. Mm -hmm. um and so hitting both of those as you apologize but yeah. for the most part like really just making sure you hit that main main apology language um and the other ones are nice but they don't mean they truly don't mean much yeah so my takeaway is for myself i actually need to be genuinely apologetic and not just trying to hit every single box <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just doing the long apology to get through it oh absolutely you know what will ever what will cease conflict and move us through i think is probably i'm all for that um so like with when you work with couples why why do you even use the idea of apology language in couples uh, therapy yeah um well as we as we know as clinicians right 70 uh, percent of 
conflicts within couples are not resolvable, right? They're going to be continual conflicts. Yeah. Um, and that's researched, right? That's backed. And so because of that, right, um, apologies are going to be needed to be made. Um, and I mean, outside of just like an intimate relationship, right? Apologies are made between friendships, hopefully between strangers sometimes too, right? Um, and so making sure specifically in the most intimate relationship that you have with someone, mm -hmm. with your partner, that we get it right. Yeah. Right. Knowing that a lot of the conflicts we have is not going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. And that's hard, right? That's hard, but that's okay. Yeah. But making sure we really hit that apology then. Yeah. Um, because that, that's where that restitution is going to come from, right? That's where that unresolved conflict can kind of come to a close in a way is by really hitting that apology. Does that hit couples hard? Couples that start with you um, thinking, or probably anybody in couples therapy with the idea of let's finally resolve this conflict and put it behind us. Is that kind of a hard, does that hit them hard? That is yeah. that way? Yeah, you know, because I, I would say, man, a lot of the time, I don't have a percentage on this, but a lot of the time couples are coming into couples therapy because they want to be able to better communicate with each other and resolve like specific conflicts that they have on their mind. Yeah. Um, that are like continually, continually coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and so hearing and learning that, you know, there actually might not be a resolution to these conflicts but it's learning how to um, navigate them when they come up yeah. and still love each other, still show that love, apologize um, if it needs to happen um, and kind of just continue to move through it. Yeah. Well, it's almost like, <laughs> I really am not like a weird person, but I'm almost like, man, they should, people should take a vow at the front end of, you know, like we're talking uh, specifically probably like committed relationships, but in marriages, when you take a vow, you know, mm -hmm. death do us part. It's kind of like, till death do us part, I promise I'll continue to apologize for our stuff that doesn't get resolved <laughs> over the, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 year relationships out there. So, but you know, usually people on their wedding day don't like to start with them. Um, I'm gonna have to apologize to you for the rest of my life in mind, I would imagine. So yeah, true. Yeah. So, I mean, you've already kind of given us some like good examples of what it sounds like when you ran through those five and will you do me a favor? Will you run through the five again? And then just like whatever examples might like easily come to mind, just like what, what that can actually sound like. Yeah. So first one is just the, I'm sorry. Right. Um, which is expressing regret, right? Just saying, I'm sorry is expressing regret. And for some people, literally all they need in that apology is just to hear you express that regret and say, you know what, I am sorry. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's, so that's an easy, not an easy one, but an easy statement. Mm -hmm. um, the second one is accepting responsibility. So somewhere in that apology, a statement needs to be said of, I was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so like, I was kind of like, I'm responsible. I'm wrong. I see it. I know it. I understand it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and just that one statement of I was wrong. Mm -hmm. is that is what accepting responsibility means for that apology language. Mm -hmm. um, number three is making restitution. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that statement actually, sometimes you can actually be a question of how can I make it right? And, and ask the partner that, right? How can I make this right? I like that. I like that because it um, it becomes collaborative again on let's get, and it shows like a genuine, I'm interested in, since I'm the one who crossed the line, what you think about making this right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so kind of making that ask, putting that question in there. Mm -hmm. um, that fourth one is genuinely repenting. And so usually that statement of, I like, I want to change, right? I want to change. I want to make sure that this doesn't happen again, right? What can I, and so it's similar to that um, making restitution with that question mark of like making that ask, yeah. but this time it's also just really saying, I want to change. I don't want this to continue to happen. I want to change okay. um, and really 
repenting and really showing that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the fifth one is asking for forgiveness, right? So that statement of, will you forgive me? Um, and which that, that one I find can be really hard for people to ask. Right. Whether you're Christian or not, I think there's kind of a heavy, a heaviness of really being able to ask for forgiveness. Um, take a lot of vulnerability, I think, um, especially when it's with your partner. And so, um, but some people really need that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, does, is that because like forgiveness is almost like I know I've done wrong. I know I need forget. Like, why is that heavy or more difficult than any of the other steps that are essentially similar in theme, but slightly different in content? Yeah. You know, um, it's a good question. I don't know. I think it's, about it, yeah. I think that it's, I think an apology in general is hard because it, you're really having to be vulnerable in that moment when you give an apology, right? No matter what. Um, but for whatever reason, I think there is just this extra heaviness when you include that word forgiveness, mm -hmm. um, because they could say no, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Like you can, in the other ones, right? In the other apology languages, they can accept the apology and you can kind of move on a little bit, um, or make a plan to move on. But with that forgiveness question, they can still say, okay, like, I accept your apology, but I don't forgive you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hard, right? That's, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm thinking that um, what you're saying is like, it, it's resonating that it's the, the, of the five, it's the least controlled by the person extending an apology. Yeah. So it's um, because if we think about forgiveness, forgiveness is an internal process that really happens in the, um, the per victim is probably too strong of a, of a word, but the person who's been offended, <clears throat> you know, it kind of, it sits within them. Yeah. And whether or not they choose to forgive is kind of their own um, internal process that does and does not actually involve another person. So to actually kind of call out where are they in their internal process and maybe be denied that is pretty, it is pretty heavy actually. It's, it's a really vulnerable risk-taking thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, um, uh, you know, well, you're trained in like your Gottman and EFT related stuff. But I remember when I was going through my EFT, which is like a motion focused therapy with a first like week long intensive, mm -hmm. um, they were talking somewhere in there. There was just a statement was made about forgiveness. Often, let's say we have like um, a couple where one of them was cheated on and one of them was the cheater. And it's very often not until the cheated on individual hears genuine, this genuine pain and remorse. And even just kind of like, I can, if the cheater can put themselves in the shoes of the cheated on and say, wow, I like, I'm so sorry. I can really see how painful that was that actually there's something about that interaction and that dynamic within a couple that allows the cheated on to be like, you really do understand the pain. I can actually forgive you and let it go. So sometimes um, I think that's why couples will keep spinning down and down and down and down and down on like, well, you did this and you don't understand. Well, like I said, I'm sorry, you know, and it will kind of keep going, but it's until like genuine yeah. apology, like we're talking about here or genuine understanding can actually be reached that it almost like releases forgiveness to happen in a relationship. Yeah. You know, I have, a, I, I don't think that the apology language theory works this way, but that almost makes me think, I wonder if the four first ones you mentioned, everybody maybe has an apology language in the first four that then would lead to the fifth being able to be forgiven. But it's just a theory I have. You know me, I'm always trying on different theories. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't come up with this material, so I am sure. Right. That you got to do your own research there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wouldn't that just be the day if I could just be my own researcher? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
let's maybe, I mean, do you have any, I was thinking kind of, um, unless you have anything you want to add, we can kind of end today with just like, how do people find this? Uh, who is the author of the material? Unless there's anything kind of spinning in you that you still want to. Yeah, no. um, again, you can, um, similar to the apology or the love languages, you can go take the test um, online you can use Google five apology language test, um, mm -hmm. but it's by Gary Chapman and um, Jennifer Thomas is the name of the psychologist um, who he partnered with for the five love languages and um, the book is called why sorry isn't enough um, for the apology language one. Okay. Um, another good book really short but um, those are kind of the resources there for that yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, Alex, thanks so much for um, just spending the, the time that we spent today. I think especially in light of, um, I mean, relationships are hard, generally speaking, and then take COVID and unemployment rates and being cooped up in our houses and here in Chicago headed into like winter, which is like, you yeah. can't get away from each other almost. I think it's just really helpful to just have these um, kind of short conversations around how couples can just continue to be well in um in a kind of global national um environment that is really putting some stressors on relationships and stuff so i just really appreciate your tidbits um yeah. for coming on again this like alex parlet is a therapist at optimum joy um he has like a few other different videos that we put together and stuff that are on um just our blog on our website i think they're on our youtube channel and then obviously if you're watching it here you're probably on instagram tv igtv so alex parlet Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. And talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.